that the time I started this business, I had some common for me, but I had this fear getting my money and invested in business. So what I did, I got, I think it was by that time, 33,000. 33, yes, Uganda shilling. 33, Uganda shilling. And I changed it into Kenya shilling. Oh, wow. The next thing you're going to find yourself in a shrine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this week's video. Today we are at Mbonipa Fashion House, right here in Luzira. And we are here to talk to the person who is behind this business. So she can tell us how the business is going. Maybe you learn one thing or two that you can also use in your own business. So come with me. So madam. For me, I know you, but for the sake of our viewers, briefly tell us who you are. Mm, I am Warren Bonifa. Yes. I am a business person, as you can see. I sell clothes. Really? And most importantly, I am a born again Christian. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. She and said. I am the CEO of Bonifa Fashion House. All and right. We are located here in Luzira. In Luzira. All right. So basically, that is me. I'm a business person, born again Christian. I think that is what defines me mostly. And I'm a mother. A wonderful mother. Yes. So why did you choose that name? But in my fashion house. Yes. Basically, you know I'm a Mufumbira by trade. I did so know. So basically, oh you didn't know? No. So when, whenever you hear I'm going to just attach Mufumbira on it. Okay. So I'm a Mufumbira by tribe and and me as me as Nori, the people that people know me as Nori, but I feel Monifa is what defines me. When you hear Monifa, you can when you try to think about it, you can oh she's a Mufumbira, oh she's oh. this. So Monifa is what defines me as a as me, not Nori. So you are that promoting your identity. That, yeah, my identity yeah, and a proud one. I like I can see, I can see your <laughs> So um you could have you said you're a business person, business lady. You could have chosen any other business. Of all the businesses in the world, why did you choose this one? I think it's unnatural, like it's I, I don't know, but I just found myself so interested in fashion. You go to buy a skirt and then you imagine how about this and whenever you you wear them, you get a compliment. Oh, no, you're so smart. I like how you select your things. And back then, we were even still young, we'd be buying t shirts and skirts of 2K, 3K. But the compliment would be up there. My friends would like what I buy. My friends actually would even come home to borrow my clothes. Not because mm. they don't have clothes, but they always liked what I do. So I think it was yes, natural in me, like that. And then growing up, I realized at some point my biological dad was a tailor. So you see how it keeps going. Yes. People who don't know, Luzira is in Kampala. But now I'm wondering of all the locations in Kampala, or let's say in Uganda, why did you choose this one? By the way, let me tell you. I think the location chose me. Is it? Yeah, because I remember when you had just shifted these ends, I looked for a place. There is a place I first got some place. Mm -hmm. And then they we failed to connect with the person, the, 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 what, the landlord of the place. Then I, I saw another place that I liked just after the zero stage. I found they had already booked all the places because the place was new. Mm -hmm. As I was passing one day, I see an empty space. I like the place. I started working. That is when I say maybe God divinely chose me for what? For this, this place. place. He thought maybe I would make it here than in any other place. That is what I can say. There was nothing like special, like I went scouting for the place or something. Okay. I found myself in this place. Finding the place. Mm -hmm. So the place chose you. Yeah, the place chose me because I didn't even have to involve a blocker. A block. Wonderful. Now I have to ask you a serious question. Many people want to start business, but they have one limitation: capital. Tell us, how did you get started? Where did you get the capital? Actually, it's funny how I started. I always tell a few people that I've talked to about eh? yes. that the time I started this business, I had some common with me, mm -hmm. but I had this fear getting my money and invested in business that I was just starting for the first time. Yes, I used to buy myself clothes and all that. I knew I had to get the fair price and all that. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're buying something to sell, it becomes complicated there. I had money on me, but that time, I feared to get my money to invest in all of it in this business that I was just starting. Okay. So what I did, I got, I think it was by that time, 33,000. 33 Uganda yes, shillings. 33 Uganda shillings. And I changed it into Kenya shilling. I was no, in Busia. 33. I was in Busia during that time. Okay. Actually, it's where this business started from. It started Busia. from Busia, then to Kampala. 
I got 33 Uganda shilling, I changed it into Kenya shilling. That was 1,000 Kenya shilling. I went okay. to Kenya. There is that market, if people know it, that market in Kusia, the, uh, uh, when you cross the other side of Kenya. Yes. I went there, I bought tops. At first, I concentrated on one thing. I didn't buy so many things at a time. I bought tops, like so many tops. I brought them at my sister's salon. She has a salon there. 1,000 bought you there. so many tops. Yeah, Barbara. She's still there. She has a salon there, Sophia in Kusia. Mm. I bought so many tops. I came, I was selling them 33,000. And I was buying them by that time. Those are so many years ago, like five mm. years ago. Mm. I was buying them one five one five, so I was selling three thousand. So my, yes, my profit was a hundred percent. I think it helped me, but I would really recognize the good things that customers want. Yes. So I got those tops. I sold. The next market day that was on a Thursday, I had made profit of. Um, I had sold tops of uh, twenty eight Uganda shillings. Remember, I went with 33 Uganda shillings? Yes. That was on Monday. Yes. By Thursday, I had sold 20, 27 Uganda shillings, and there were still other tops remaining. So I just got that money. Every money I would make, I wouldn't spend it on myself or anything. I'll just get that money and go back to the market. Like that. And buy when I sell, go back to the market. I couldn't remove any money from my business, not even for anything except transport. I see. So, um, <coughs> for me personally, maybe because I'm new here. I think that this place is today. So how do you get your customers to come? Actually, I think the best way for me, it has worked for me, I get my customers with customer care. Mm. You come, I serve you, you bring for me another customer. Referrals? Yes. Most of my customers have been referrals. Wonderful. Most of them. There's some lady there, she sells nice and then others that pass. Someone mm -hmm. can pass, they see a nice and, and actually even this Display. I make sure I put the right thing outside. Someone will pass and see it. Come, they will not even buy the one outside. Buy the one inside. Yet. And then someone will pass and someone will say, Someone called me, my sister called me and told me, You have very nice tops here. The other one didn't buy, but they called someone to come and check the place out, someone who lives within the area. But mostly, it has been referrals. I work on, I give my customers my best such that they can tell their friends about me when they're there. I think that's pretty fun. And then maybe the other thing, sometimes it's not about how busy the place is, but are you in the right place and are you bringing the right things? Do you know I get customers who come from Mukono, passes all those shops in Mukono and comes here because she's expecting to get the best from here. I try to make sure I give them the best. And I think if you're bringing the right things and you have the best communication with your customers, even if you're deep down there hidden, someone will drive and find you where you are to get a nice food. I see. So does this business have competition? Yeah. Like any other business, there is competition. How do you deal with competition? But I never see competition negatively. I look at competition positive. Actually, one door from me, I have a sister there. She sells clothes. We are typically selling the same clothes. And we go together to buy them. Yes. And we are all selling. You get, we are selling at the same place, same customers. I'll tell a customer, I don't have that, but she has it. The customer will go there and buy and then come here. You always have to look at competition positive. You don't I, do like, I, I don't go there, come I here. I don't. <laughs> Trust me, you'll find a customer one stops and they are seated there comfortable. I'll go there and pick the tops if I don't have. Mm. What if maybe the size? Usually yeah. it's about the size. When maybe the customer, if I don't have a size, mm. I'll go pick the tops from them, bring them here with the customer choosing. I think we should always look at competition in a positive way because when you look at competition in a negative way, you're going to start hating, your attitude is going to be negative, you're going to be rude to a person who would have told, let me let me come, you can help me watch as I come. You can't because you're really mm. looking at them negatively. The so next thing you're going to find yourself in a shrine. <laughs> 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 so if you look at competition negatively, mm -hmm. that is what happens. I have chosen positivity over competition exactly. because I know my blessing is not a blessing. God has a particular blessing for each one of us. That is what I believe. So apart from customer care, how else do you make sure that your customers keep coming back? By bringing the best things. You might have the best customer care in the world, mm -hmm. but whenever a customer comes here, they don't find what, what they, they want. want. They don't find what they like. Someone will not come back. I ever could come. Usually, I listen to my customers. Whenever they over demand something, I bring it. Whenever they over complain about something, I reduce on the, the quantity of that thing. Mm. I listen to them. You do my just To be honest, no. You don't I have, a, I have a Facebook page. It's called Moniba Fashion House. Okay. But I don't really, really, really push it. it. And then I have a uh, Instagram page. It's also called Moniba Fashion. Okay. But still, I don't really post it or do anything. Once in a while, I put on my status, but really, like I told you, referrals work for me. If you are enjoying this video, then 
please make sure that you hit like right now and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure that you subscribe because we are going to continue bringing you more of these tips i hope you are taking notes so tell me what is the best thing or what do you like most about this business because you chose this business over all other businesses it's it's comfortable how comfortable it's only hectic when I'm downtown. Because yeah. downtown, you find all characters, the rough ones, the hard ones. I think we're not downtown. Downtown people. Yes, on a scale of 10, you find three three customer caring people downtown. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they but take you know, roughly. So, yeah, so it's only hectic. Though some of them are really good at what they do. Some of them, they are they're already good at what they do. But then there are those who are not that good. But it's only hectic in the morning. Afterwards, come here. Iron your clothes, maybe also that is hectic because I have to make sure that I iron their meat and all these customers to get skin mm. irritations and then they say that what I bought from you that place. But of course, some of them are shut mm. So after the ironing, the ironing is the hectic bit of it there, the ironing and downtown after that, I sit and wait, wait for my customers to come. I serve them. So the ironing is also part of making sure mm. the quality is. Yes. Let me tell you. When you get a top from downtown, those things are in a bell. You have you ever seen a bell? Yes. They are tied I so used to hard, that. they are already squeezed up. Oh, you sold clothes. Yes, from Kisumu. <laughs> I used to buy a bell from Kisumu. I wish I knew you then when you were selling clothes in Kisumu. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that the bell is already squeezed up, the clothes are so like wrinkled. Yeah. So you cannot give that cloth to a customer. Mm. Trust me, you bought it expensively, it's worth it's worth a lot. But when a customer is looking at it in that format, they're yeah. going to feel like ah, it's not worth anything. But when you iron it, it's even more work than the price you're selling it. So there's a way it makes what you're selling easy to be bought. That's something you have to explain. You know the top is nice, just that it's wrinkled. Actually, when you reach home and wash it and iron it, you'll see it's okay. beauty. You know, the customer has to see the beauty from the shop before, before they, they take it at home. So it's a must at least. Yeah. If you can't buy a steam, like me, I use a steam. But if you can't buy a steam, you can use a flat iron. If you're in a place where you can't, there's no electricity, still you can get this charcoal stove. The demand, you apply to your charcoal stove, your charcoal stove, then you'll be getting the mandate to the flat. Is it called also a flat iron? Ah, I think it's called iron box. Uh -huh. <laughs> to the iron box. <laughs> then you iron. At least wherever you're selling from, whether in the village, whether in some cafunda somewhere, whether you're selling one on one, like some people sell one on one offices, mm -hmm. workplaces, you iron. Take something which is presentable, it's easy for someone to admire. Yeah, apart from the downtown challenges, are there any other challenges to do with this business? Yeah, of course, there are customers. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to talk bad on my customers, I love and respect all my customers. Definitely. Right. Yes. But then, um, trust me, you're going to buy a top 13,000. 13, buying a top, just a top. Mm. And you know what? My tops here, I sell them 10. To 20 that's the price of my top and you'll find a time when i'm selling 10 to 15. so there's a time you're going to buy a top uh 13,000, but a customer is going to come and they're used to buying the ones of 10 10. and that, that particular time they want that one off the one you bought at, at 13 at 10 000. yes they want it at 10 000. you'll mm -hmm. try to explain this one today i'm going to give it to you at 18. It's not going to be like the ones you've been taking at 10. Trust me, at some point they'll feel like you're cheating. They've mm. asked, at even a particular time, they feel like you're not the owner of the business. <laughs> <laughs> you're putting up no more profit on the clothes, but mm. it depends. Usually our prices vary depending on the price you bought in the market. So if the price in the market is really high, even you're going to increase. But when the prices are favorable, I am that flexible. I also lower. But you find a customer being not convinced that a shift in the pricing, but so handling that customer to make sure they buy is always hard. But I thank God that sometimes they never understand. Okay, so you have talked about tops. I think tops, I've had tops. Tops, mm -hmm. tops are the only thing you sell here. No, actually, here <laughs> is a one stop center. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When you come, you're going to get from Nika's new and second-hand ladies sneakers mm -hmm. i sell dresses office casual long tall all sizes from a size 4 to a size 20. Oh, wow, dresses i sell all sizes of tops office casual i sell jeans all sizes even a 24 i have even a size 4 i have and then I sell work outfits like the bob tubes, the pants, and then the, the t-shirts or the vests. 
and then the workout jackets. I sell diras. There are some materials, they are called diras, they are free dresses. I get them from here in Kenya. Then I sell perfumes, ladies' mist, basically Victoria's Secret and uh, Body and Bath. Victoria's yeah. Secret. Hi. Victoria's Secret and Body and Bath. It's under um, Sandy Scents. And uh, we get them from Dubai, from the very Victoria outlets too. In Dubai? Schools, yes. They are always genuine on point. Yes. Then I have jean jackets, I have jackets, I have sweaters, I have party dresses, I have bags, I have craft shoes, patras, shorts, office pants, dresses, belt. Actually, we are a one stop center like uh, coats, these are ladies' coats, jean jackets, dresses, sweaters, mostly party and tops the other side, skirts. Even if there is something you want and I don't have it, if you can give me time. I, I will deliver, you will get what you want. I have capes and those beach hats, the round hats. I have swimming costumes. Yeah. So yeah. literally when you come here, trust me, you can't fail to get what you want. And I have this. I make earrings. Don't I make you like pearls, this one? I make single pearls. Handmade. Single pearls. Yes, handmade. Those ones I make myself. You just order, then I deliver. And then there is also something that I do. I sell children's clothes, but mostly they are not always here. Someone will come and put their leg. Since I saw pregnant dresses, pregnant dresses mm -hmm. uh, uh, an expecting mother would come and tell me, Noreen, I need that shopping for my baby. Mm -hmm. So I will shop all that I think the mother needs. Mm -hmm. Then bring here, call her, she will come and choose her best. Mm -hmm. Then, usually, the ones that remain, I keep them aside for the display. But still, some people come and buy, or go slowly by slowly. Then, when another person comes and makes them. So, if we want to come and buy these nice things that you are selling here, how do we find you apart from knowing that you are? Apart from knowing that you are in Zealand, how else can you get to? Um, basically, you can reach me on my number. There is that option. My number is always open for my customer. MTN has WhatsApp. My MTN, you can either text me on my MTN on WhatsApp, or you can still call my MTN, or you can call my Wari, or you can look for me on Facebook. When you look for Boni Panorin, you can box me for anything in Boni Panorin. Or you can go on the business page, which is Boni Fashion House on Facebook. Or you can still find me on Instagram, that is Boni uh, Fashion House or Boni Panorin. Any of those pages, you can box me. I'll answer you there and then. If you just want to come direct, you can just come up to the zero. The shop is always open. We are open from Monday to Monday from 8.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. All right, let's continue. So, you have been this, in this business for how long now? I started this business in 2016, around August, if I'm not forgotten. 2016, so that's yes. almost six years. Mm -hmm. I finished around 2013. Then I. You know, when you just go to school, you're always looking for this, looking for this. You, you think of being employed. Eh? Yes. Not knowing it's really hectic in those offices there. So I think I grew up in a business family. My parents have raised me up with business people. Growing up in business, you know how business works. But then, as if you want to do some other thing, as if you don't want to employ yourself. And then afterwards, I'm like, no, these people have made it in business. Why can't you like the idea come? So you never bothered to look for a job? No, I've never looked for a job. But at mm. some point, my sister got me a job. Mm. Guess what? My first job was. Mm. I loved my job, but the bad thing about my job was waking up in the morning. They, mm. said they expected me at work at seven, and I had to leave at six. Every and day. if there is one thing I love, it's to sleep. <laughs> 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 but still being employed does not allow you to sleep. Mm. Do you know I'm always up by 5.40? Mm, so I'm always up by 5.40. That is when I'm going to you know, downtown. Because the door, you, know, you have to be there. Latest by 7. That is when they cut the bells, mostly. So I wake up early. Though there are days I don't have to wake up early. Okay. So almost 6 years is a long time. Mm. And we know, statistically, mm. that in Uganda, if 1,000 businesses are started today, by the end of one year, they will be remaining only 100. By the end of five years, they will be remaining only 10. By the end of the 10th year, they will be remaining only one out of 1,000. So, yours is now among the top 10 of the 1,000 that started. So, if somebody else is thinking of starting this business, 
What do they need to do? This particular one. I think one thing they need. Scouting and renting a shop should be the last on your list when you're thinking of this business. I think before you even admire, yeah, because you can admire me selling dresses, scar stops, and what, mm. but you're not going to start buying selling all these things at once. Mm -hmm. First, identify one item that you yeah. want. Among all these, identify one item. So that's that important. Yes.